Hey there, welcome to DIY Projects with Pete. Today I'm going to show you the process of building an outdoor gas fireplace. Let's get started. The first step is to determine the size for your tabletop. I'm using a 30 inch by 10 inch stainless steel burner pan that's part of a kit I ordered online. And I chose to have 12 inches of concrete around it on all sides to hold food, drinks, and to use as a footrest. Measure one and a half inch thick foam to a size slightly larger than the box of the fire pan. This will create a rectangular void in the center of the concrete for the pan to sit. Next, cut the bottom of the mold for the tabletop using a circular saw. Always use safety gear when making cuts and take your time. For the detailed instructions, photos, and plans to build this project, head over to DIYP.com forward slash outdoor gas fireplace. Head over to the table saw to cut the side walls for the mold. You'll cut a total of four strips to a width of two and one quarters inches. Attach them to the base piece using one and five eighths inch screws. Always pre-drill to prevent the wood from splitting. And I'd recommend using a screw about every six to eight inches. You'll want to work your way around all four sides and cut the lengths down using a miter saw. Wrap the four sides of the foam with clear packaging tape to seal it. Then center and attach it to the bottom of the mold using silicone. Next, lay the metal reinforcement into place. Use a bolt cutter to trim the square mesh down to size. Keep about an inch gap between the reinforcement and the side walls around the entire perimeter. Then cut reinforcement around the foam knockout. And once that's cut out, use your hands to kind of bend the wire if needed to flatten it out as much as possible. We'll move on to creating the mold which will form the concrete base for the tabletop. Cut the boards to size using a table saw. Then lay them on a flat surface and assemble that outer box. Pre-drill and then use three or four screws at each corner. Next, we'll cut the boards for the inside box. Use a pocket hole jig so we'll easily be able to remove the screws from the inside later in the demolding process. Put three pocket holes on the sides of each shorter inside board. Then start forming the inner box and attach from the inside with screws. Once the inner box is assembled, We'll grab that outer box. We'll cut a base piece to size and then attach from the bottom to that larger outer box using screws. The base piece is going to hold the concrete in the mold and it's going to also square it up. Next, drill pocket holes on the insides of the smaller box toward the bottom. We'll use these to attach the inner box to the base piece of the mold. Work your way around all four sides. Next, cut foam to create vents in the base unit for air to flow through according to the manufacturer's recommendations. Do make sure to consult with the manufacturer and a licensed plumber to determine the best venting solution for your specific project and to learn about any special requirements needed that depend on the type of gas being used, whether it is propane or natural gas. I cut foam knockouts that were three inches by nine inches and placed them toward the bottom of the table base on opposite sides. I also created knockouts for the gas line and the key. I used one inch piping for this and wrapped with tape to help make it easier to remove during the demolding process. Use silicone to seal the corners of the box and to help create a slightly beveled corner. Put the smaller box into place and then check to make sure there is approximately one and a half inches between the two boxes because this is the channel we'll be pouring concrete in to form that concrete base. Make sure the boxes are squared up and then attach the inside box using screws in the pocket holes. Then use rubbing alcohol, compressed air, or a vacuum to clean out any debris on the molds prior to the pouring process. You can also figure out reinforcement for the box at this time, depending on the concrete mix you go with. I've had really good luck mixing concrete fibers in for added reinforcement, or you can be creative using square reinforcement or mesh. It's also a good idea to seal the edges of the table mold with silicone, which will give the top edge of the table a slight bevel. Round over the silicone with your index finger or a caulk tool and remove any excess using a paper towel. Now it's time to start mixing up the concrete. I mix one to two bags at a time in a plastic tub using a mason's hoe. Mix the concrete until it's about a peanut butter to pancake batter consistency. You can add plasticizers to help reduce the amount of water needed 
and to increase how well it flows into the mold. You can also use additives to give you more time to work with the concrete if you're working with a mix that sets up more quickly. For most standard bag mixes though, you'll have plenty of time to work with the concrete. Slowly pour the concrete evenly around each side. Between each pour, you'll want to vibrate the concrete by either shaking the table or hitting the sides of the mold with a mallet. This is going to help remove air pockets from the concrete. Then insert reinforcement as needed and use a bolt cutter to cut off any excess. Keep the reinforcement in the center of the concrete as best as possible so it doesn't poke through toward the outside. Remember, you can look into using fibers in the concrete or using special mixes that will eliminate or minimize the need for metal reinforcement. During the pour, I realized the weight of the concrete was pushing the mold walls out a bit. So to fix this, I placed a couple 2x4 boards on the inside to prevent it from bowing inward and a few clamps to pull it back in from the outside. I'd recommend putting the holds and braces in place prior to the pouring process when you build yours. Do another round of vibrating the concrete once the mold is full to help it flow into all corners and to minimize air pockets. The molds will become very heavy, so do have a second person to help when shaking the table or whenever lifting the concrete. Use a trowel or a scrap board to level off or screed the concrete so you have an even base that will rest level on the ground when it is put into place and fill any low spots with additional concrete if needed. Now we'll move on to pouring the concrete for the tabletop. Pour the concrete evenly and spread it out using your hands and fingers to push it into the edges and the corners. Remember to always wear rubber gloves when working with concrete and a mask whenever there is concrete dust in the air. Fill the mold slightly more than halfway and then vibrate the concrete. Next, add the steel reinforcement and make sure it is as flat as you can get it. Then continue to add concrete until the mold is completely filled. Mix up additional concrete if needed and continue to vibrate the concrete a few times during the process. Level the concrete at the end by using a scrap board and moving it back and forth in a saw-like motion to even out the surface. You'll want to screed from one end to the other multiple times until the mold is filled evenly. Fill low spots as needed with additional concrete or remove excess and put it back into the mixing tub. Then do a final leveling and vibrate the concrete again to remove air pockets. Use a trowel to help smooth out the surface after screeding. And lastly, cover the concrete and wait for the concrete to cure as recommended by the supplier. Some mixes take days to cure, while some have properties that allow them to cure in just a few hours. Once the concrete has had plenty of time to cure, we can take it out of the mold. Start by removing the screws on the sidewalls. Use a chisel or a flathead screwdriver to carefully pry the sidewalls away from the concrete. You'll want to pry between the sidewalls and the base piece, making sure to always pry against wood and never against concrete. Then use sandpaper to smooth over all of the rough edges. Always work from the corner outward so you don't blow out a corner accidentally. Continue around all four sides. Next, remove the sides from the table base. You'll want to undo the screws on the sides and then slide the mold on the table so you have access to the screws that are on the underside as well. You'll slowly pry and pull away one side of the mold at a time. And once all of the outer boards are removed, it's time to remove the inner boards. So you can take all the screws out of the pocket holes and then remove one board at a time. Some can be kind of stubborn, so plan on taking extra time for this process, and you don't want to put too much stress on the concrete. Always pry between wood surfaces and never against the concrete. You may need to be a little creative in removing the boards. I found that chiseling through the middle of the particle board part of the melamine worked the best. Then tap out the knockouts and clean up all the debris after the demolding process. Now we'll move the base piece from the concrete top. With the help of another person, flip the concrete top right side up, position foam or towels under the sides during flipping to protect the concrete, and then slowly pull the melamine away from the concrete. Make sure you have wood or foam under it so air is able to evenly flow around the piece and continue to cure it. Allow both concrete pieces to continue to cure. This could be anywhere from a few hours to a day or so depending on the type of concrete used. The base had very few voids and I really liked the organic look it had without filling the voids and so I didn't fill any. Um, I just used an orbital sander to do a quick sanding of the base. Next I sanded the underside of the table portion to smooth it out and to remove any rough edges. Next I rotated the concrete right side up, sanded the edges 
and then lightly sanded the top surface. My top surface came out super smooth without air pockets, so I didn't want to sand and mess anything up too much. But if you have more air pockets and need to fill them, I'd recommend checking out my concrete dining table project to see the process. After sanding, you can seal the concrete. I'd recommend a water-based acrylic sealer made for concrete or stone. Do a couple coats on the base first. It's going to dry quickly so you don't have to wait long between coats. Next, apply a concrete sealer to the top. I apply about six thin coats on the tabletop using a microfiber rag. I dilute the first couple coats with about one part water to two parts sealer. And then the final coats go on full strength. Have a licensed plumber install the propane kit and burner as recommended by the manufacturer. Feeding the lines through the knockout areas, installing the key, making sure there are no leaks and that the project is done to code in your area. Then put the concrete top on over the base. You can run a bead of silicone along the top of the base to prevent the top from moving if you'd like. And have a plumber install that burner pan and set it in place. Lastly, pour the fire glass in the pan and enjoy your brand new outdoor gas fireplace. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this tutorial. If you found it helpful, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and tell your friends. Then head over to DIYPete.com forward slash outdoor gas fireplace for more instructions, plans, and links to the materials and supplies used in this project. Best of luck with your upcoming DIY projects and cheers from Montana. For more DIY inspiration and project ideas, check out some of the other videos on the channel. Click on the left thumbnail to see how to build an outdoor concrete coffee table and on the right thumbnail for a link to the Patio Projects playlist. Cheers!